Hello friends, welcome back to Tech with Viresh. So today in the continuation to our series on Apache Spark Deep Dive, we'll do a series of videos on the Spark execution model. And we'll try to relate this execution model with the details on the Spark UI. We'll try to cover that what all information do we have on the Spark UI and how to use Spark UI, uh, UI for any sort of debugging or check the details of the job and to do any sort of performance optimization. So guys, let's start. So uh, we'll try to understand, you know, this whole series, video series that I'll do on Spark execution model. We'll try to see uh, under the hood how actually a particular Spark application works. What are the different, you know, physical execution steps in this whole uh, setup of distributed computing of Spark? Uh, how it works on a cluster, how the data is, you know, distributed, how the task executors uh, work upon those units and stuff like that. So uh, let's start on this. So any sort of data transformation that we talk in the Spark world, they will uh, primarily fall into two categories. Uh, one is the narrow, another one would be the white. And I've discussed in a separate video in detail about narrow and white transformations. Uh, but uh, quickly at high level, narrow transformations do not require any sort of shuffling of data across. So if you see as per this diagram, uh, same partitions worked upon by a transformation and resulted into a same partition uh, or records of the same partition. No shuffling has happened across the nodes. While on the other side, we have wide transformation where data has been shuffled across from different partitions on different nodes. So these are your narrow and wide transformations. Quick examples for your narrow transformations are your select, your filters, right? Your map operations and stuff like that. Your wide operations are obviously your uh, by key operations, repartitions, joints, etc. right? So let's try to run it with an example. Say I've created a small data frame here, right? On which I've called a repartition. If I use it, uh, create a, this data frame for 100, 1 to 100 uh, integer values. And if I try to do uh, uh, find out the number of partitions without doing the repartition on my machine, it shows 32. So I just try to repartition them into five, right? And then display the record. For this particular small job to create a data frame, if I try to find out the what is the execution model and what has happened uh, under the line for this particular creation of data frame and doing the repartitioning of the data frame. I can get a Spark execution model for that. And in that model, I'll see two uh, plans. And I can I can see that those plans with a command called explain with passing through, it will give me all the plans. And so plans are categorized into two. Uh, one is the logical plan. The, this is the first phase, right? Where the logical plan is created, uh, which is nothing but the sequential combination of all the steps that will be executed for uh, the action that you're going to perform as part of that particular job. Uh, when you and see, we'll have to remember one thing, right? Your RDDs or data frames are immutable. So any sort of transformations that we are calling in will result into new RDD or data frame, right? And this all will make a part of that uh, RDD lineage or uh, DAG. Right. This all transformations will go into that uh, dynamic as part of that uh, dynamic acyclic graph. And when you will call uh, an action, that time that uh, graph would be traversed and transformations would be actually applied, physically applied. So, and that is what we call as the physical plan. So whenever you trigger in any action, uh, that entire DAG would be taken into as a blueprint <coughs> for the execution of the job. And then uh, that plan would be executed. The another nuance into that is your optimizers will come into the picture. The catalyst optimizers that we have in Spark will come into the picture and try to create an optimized execution, physical execution plan. Another thing which we discussed in one of the earlier videos is adaptive query execution plan, right? Which we can enable, which is disabled by default, uh, which will be also taken into account when we'll do a cost based analysis to select the optimum physical plan right so but in uh, when we talk about execution model for a spark job we'll see two things one is the logical plan another one is the physical plan right and uh, this is how the entire uh, execution model or query plan would 
query execution model would look like. So you have given uh, queries or jobs in different format, SQL, data sets, data frame. Then you parsing, analyzing, and optimizing would happen. Uh, that is all part of your uh, logical planning, right? And then your physical plans are created. This is your physical plan is created, which goes for cost cost based uh, analysis. Check out that uh, the number of different physical plans generated. What is the most optimum one? And then uh, based on certain different factors like, you know, what is the uh, map file generated by the different uh, shuffle phases, uh, right? Shuffle phase and result phase that we have two phase of this stage. Is it'll find out uh, where based on the cost model, it'll find out which is the most effective and optimized physical plan, and that will be eventually executed. But this is the sequence of flow of execution for any any uh, job that you submit to you it, that your query or your APIs would be parsed and analyzer will come to the picture logical plan would be created then that logical plan would be optimized then a physical plan is created right and then physical plan goes under cost space analysis and the finally uh, most optimized physical plan is picked up and eventually executed right now for the same job if I try to look out the execution model or the query plan I can use a command called explain right and if I see here it shows me the logical plan and the physical plan it's a pretty simple one right you have a logical plan which says we need to do the repartitioning so the repartitioning true there's nothing much here which is op which can be optimized right so it's the the parse logical plan and the optimized logical plan are same here uh, in a physical plan it's also if you see it it shows that we need to do a, a partitioning and this is a lo local table scan right we'll read the data frame that we have created and that would be a local table scan and that will be part uh, that will be repartition for that an important point which i want to highlight is if you see the partitioner used here i have referenced this multiple times in my previous partitioning videos that it shows round robin partitioning right as we discussed in earlier videos in detail about partitioning and partitioners we said there is nothing as such a default partitioner default partitioner is none and the partitioning happens in the round robin method uh, based on the number of different nodes available in the cluster right so this is what we can see in the physical plan also it is round robin partitioning and number of partitions three partitions we are trying to do is five so this is we can see the entire you know execution model that there is it has created a there's a parsing is done and a parse logical plan is created then analysis happens happened and then we have the optimized logical plan and then a physical plan this physical plan is <coughs> is what is chosen out of the cost based analysis as we discussed in the previous slides the entire flow right now try to see it on the spark ui how does this particular job looks on the spark ui so if i look at this spark ui, uh, spark UI i have two stages created for it right because i have a data shuffle repartitioning has happened that will divide the entire job into two stages right first one will do a read of the data and then that read of the data would be shuffled to do the repartitioning operation right so there are two stages that we see this stage one this stage two and then we see here also this is a local table scan and once the local table scan has happened it will do exchange shuffle the data to the next stage right and the next stage is where the repartitioning will happen so that we can see on the job tab of the spark ui correct now try to twist the job that we have created so now what i have tried to do in the same example i've added this dot cache so this is the change i've made in the previous one uh, this is my data frame second in this uh, I'm, I'm doing the same stuff i'm repartitioning it but the data frame that i created for 1 to 100 integer values i've just did a cache on that data frame so let's see how the things uh, would change uh, as far as far as the execution model is concerned interesting right so if i check at the logical at the at the explain plan right now <clears throat> so my past logical plan remains same my analyze logical plan remains same if i see my optimized logical plan right there uh, here is where the magic has introduced if you see now it's not a 
file scan or a table local file scan it has become in memory scan now right it has become an in memory because we have called the cache right so rather than doing any local table scan reading it from the file it will now read it from the memory because you already cached it so that will go into the uh, memory of the that particular executor uh, which will execute this particular partition and uh, that will read it from the local memory of that executor <clears throat> and if you see at the execution uh, the physical plan also it shows that in the physical plan we're going to read it from in memory and then it also shows the storage level yeah by default if you call the uh, cache it is nothing but persist with uh, on memory memory local uh, parameters so this is the change which has happened when i uh, change it uh, added that dot cache command try to cache the data frame on which i'm going to call the repartitioning right if i see at the spark ui previously i had only had these two steps local file scan and exchange now this code gen stage is included when i try to cache the data frame before applying the repartitioning so uh, a quick we'll do a detailed video on what exactly is the whole uh, code stage stage code gen but at a very high level it's a physical query optimization is spark cl so it, it's one sort of uh, optimization step that kind of fuses the multiple physic physical operators uh, into a single java function so the idea here in in the whole uh, stage code gen is it kinds of maintain a sub query of all the different operators uh, that we need to uh, apply for a particular spark sql or IP, api based spark sql and then it tries to create a single function like you may have uh, different stuff you have may have filters number of different filters or some other operators so it will club all of them into single java function so that is what at a very high level uh, whole stage code gen does and this has come into the picture when we try to call our cache operation right uh, the rest of things remain same it goes to the exchange for the next stage right because we have repartition so one job is divided into two stages and if you look try to look into the details of the whole stage code chain we'll see that it tries to read that scan which is a local table scan which is already cached and then it tries to create some sort of map partitioning partitions rds applying the different aggregators when it will try to do the uh, produce the stuff produce the final rdd or, or set of partitions to be exchanged to be shuffled so that is what has another thing has come into the picture which we can see from the spark ui looking at the sta stages tab of the spark ui so guys that's it in this particular video uh, at a very high level we try to see that how uh, execution of a particular spark job spark query uh, happens uh, behind the scene and i'll do uh, a series of videos on a spark execution model this is the part one keep watching for further videos have a good day ahead bye bye that's it in this particular video keep watching have a good day